Hello, everyone. Nice to see so many of you joining us. If our friends at Seven Trent could join us now, too, we'll get this party started, as they say. Welcome to this afternoon's session. Um, my name's Sharon Walpole from Karuma, and I will be hosting today's event with our guests from Seven Trent. You'll be learning all about their apprenticeship opportunities, and I'm sure Darren will tell you about some chance to do a bit of a poll and um, answer some questions about who you are, where you are, and what your thoughts are. You can see on the right, there's a chat box. Feel free to put any comments or questions you have in there. I'll be gathering those up for the Q&A that will happen after the end of the presentation. You also have a chance to hear from some of the apprentices, so it all sounds very exciting. Just to let you know that this event and all of our events with National Apprenticeship Week are being recorded. I'll be putting the link in the chat, but you can uh, share and watch again uh, next week. So enough for me rabbiting on. I'll hand over to your host, Darren, and I will see you later for the Q&A. Thank you very much, Sharon. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as Sharon has indicated, my name is Darren. I work at Seven Trent as an attraction and selection lead, um, focusing on our early careers program. So anything new talent, so apprenticeships, undergraduate, and um, graduate opportunities and um, delighted that there's so many of you uh, online um, to find out more and what I'm going to do is just take you through what the agenda is so there is the chat box, there's chat box there available for you as Sharon mentioned but I'm going to be launching a quick poll in a moment but that's the agenda that we're going to cover um, it is open for you to include some comments in the chat about your own objectives for attending this session but i will provide an overview of who we are and what we do and um, tell you a little bit more about us as an organization culturally because i think that's massively important if you are a young person considering future options and going into the world of work and if there are any parents watching this as well i also think as an influencer that's massively important to you too We'll provide an overview of the apprenticeships and their offering that we have at Seven Trend, but tonight we are going to be focusing on the operational world. So there's some great speakers that will be joining me and sharing their experiences. And you all can see as well that they're female. So we do work in an industry which is predominantly male within the operational world, but times are changing and we're keen to share the opportunities that females as well as males have. So we are an inclusive organization. I think that's really important to share because there's some brilliant examples of the work that our apprentices and people that have graduated from our apprenticeships and do. So we'll hear more from them later. So we will cover the important aspects of selection towards the end. And then there's a few minutes at the end to cover any Q and A. So there is a quick poll that I have just um, launched, which asks about options that you're considering for 2022. It'd be lovely if you can just give us an indication if it is the apprenticeship route that you're looking to progress into post-education or you might have just completed education and looking at um, apprenticeships this year. You might be somebody that is in year 10 or year 12, maybe year 9 even, and looking ahead but even further than next year as to what those um, opportunities are. So... If we could give that a few more seconds, I can see that there's a lot of people considering the apprenticeship route, which is great. I'm not entirely sure how many have answered that. So I'm going to keep it up for a moment and just quickly move on to the aim. So this is your session tonight. So it's really important to us to share information with you that's going to be important in the future. So in the chat, if you do want to include any specifics that you come along to find out more about, then we can cover that at the end and make sure that those objectives that you have are crossed off by the time we finish at six. But there's the agenda again. So we'll finish prompt at that time. So let's move on and go to a little bit of information about who we are. So geographically, in the centre there of the slide, you can see a map. And that map is a geographical area that Seven Trent are responsible for in the provision of clean water to around 8 million customers, over 4 million households and, and non-households that sort of we provide to as well. We take away that wastewater 
and treat that and put it back into the environment safely. So it's a hugely complex operation to do that with some incredibly talented people from all different backgrounds, um, all across all different locations and working in all different disciplines as well. But there is some um, similarities with a lot of parts to our business in terms of the skills that are required. So if you are an individual that um, enjoys STEM subjects at school, then there are lots of opportunities across different parts of the business and we'll share more of that to you as we progress. So the left hand side of the slide, there is a regulated water and waste water business. So you can see there's quite a big numbers there in terms of people that we have providing, you know, doing their role um, to make sure that we all enjoy water and take away the dirty stuff and put it back through processes and clean it into the, put it back into the environment. On the right hand side there, you can see business services. So you'll hear more about bioresources a little later from, from Leah. Um, but there's also, um, so bioresources, I'll let sort of Leah sort of describe in detail how the product of, uh, of waste, which is a commercial value, we work closely with the agricultural industry, um, but there is different processes that we put waste through to create a product that we can sell. Green power, renewables are really important to us as an organisation to help generate enough energy to operate our own assets, um, and we have different ways in which we do that. Operating Services UK are actually called Seven Trend Services, it's moved to services, um, but they look after commercial contracts across the entire UK. So from John, John O'Groats, Land's End, there are contracts that we have with commercial organisation providing water, wastewater, hygiene services. Opportunities in all of these areas that I've just uh, described there. And developer services as well, focuses on new connections, new builds, and there are different parts of Seven Trend organisation too. In total, you can see that there's nearly 7,000 people that sort of make sure that our 8 million customers we're providing sort of that essential service really, and they're one of life's essentials to them every single day. So I'm not gonna go through this slide uh, end to end, it's incredibly small for you to read. And um, what I would um, like to say is that um, from the different ways in which we can abstract water from the ground and different ways in which we collect that, all the way through to cleaning it, distribute it, as I've mentioned, and customers enjoying it, um, and then putting it through processes. There's um, a lot of technical, technically minded um, people across all levels from, and that includes apprentices as well. So we have opportunity within the operational world, and that's what we're here to talk about this evening. From a renewals perspective also, then we do have opportunity there within the likes of our green power business that's based in Oxfordshire, and um, there's a whole host of opportunities which we'll come on to in a moment. Oops. This is really important, whether you're an individual that is looking to pursue an apprenticeship or a parent that might be looking out for your son or daughter as to, okay, what kind of organisation is it that, um, my, my, you know, that we could be pursuing here in terms of opportunity? So, so Seven Trent has a purpose, it has a social purpose as an organisation as well, and that's providing and taking care of one of life's essentials. So we work very closely within our communities, and we are part of the national critical infrastructure. And during the pandemic period, a lot of our workers were key worker status, and that is because we needed to still provide that service 24-7. So that is our purpose as an organisation, and the splashes around the outside of that slide are our values. So as an individual that is pursuing um, future opportunities, then I'm pretty sure that you'll be somebody, if you're watching this on video after the event or with us live this evening, then certainly embracing curiosity is something that you're demonstrating right now. You want to find out a little bit more and our people embrace curiosity every single day to continuously improve no matter what it is that they do. So we celebrate that, you know, people wanting to sort of be the best that they possibly can be individually and within teams to be able to achieve the goals that we set out to achieve. Taking pride, um, those 7,000 people across the Seven Trent business, across all roles, whether it's operational or non-operational, will take immense pride in what they do. Um, around 98% of um, employees are also customers. So there is a sort of personal pride to what people do when the work that is being completed, irrespective of where you are in a business, 
is actually having an impact on the customer. So if we move back across to showing care, um, we show care to each other. I've called upon um, the support of, of Leah, Serena and Megan this evening. So it's sort of showing care internally to make sure that we sort of do what we, what we can do to be the very best that we can as a team. And then externally, we show care to our customers also want to come on to that in a moment. And having courage as well, you know, it's, um, it, it, you've, had, you've demonstrated courage by coming on to this this evening. You're demonstrating courage because you might not be quite sure what it is and how this session is going to pan out. I would ask you to sort of contribute and to chat where, uh, where you can and where you want to. It, it's a safe environment, you know, we're not going to be indicating names. So do ask those questions, but you all have courage and our people have courage as well, because every day brings something new. And in addition to that, sometimes we have to go out of our comfort zone to actually make sure we get to the place where we want to be. But you've got the support of your teams, line managers and, um, you know, colleagues to be able to sort of achieve um, the goals that we have. This is important and I'll come on to um, the reason why. So what I'm showing you here, um, as an organisation, we report into the regulator. So the regulator for the water industry is an organisation called Ofwat. So we also have very close links with the Environment Agency as well with the work that we do. But we set out um, targets every five years and um, what you're seeing in front of you is a, just a snippet of the commitments that we have made to our communities in the service that we will provide and apprentice is a part of this as well so if we look at that second sort of row down where it talks about improving our service then we do have and we'll be hearing from megan who works in the world of leakage and sort of she'll talk about that in a little bit more detail it's not bursting the road it's unaccounted for loss of water so that 15 percent there is a reduction in which we are looking to achieve by 2025 so there are specific targets there that have been set and we sort of need to meet those now what's important here is that um i suppose targets such as these have enabled us to look at the offerings that we provide in our communities in terms of careers so off the back of these five-year plans in 2020 was our first cohort of leakage apprentices and it's quite a big program um, so we've got opportunity in every single county in the seven trend region. Also looking down here, you can see the customer communities come up very strong as well. So we've made a 10 million pound investment into a purpose built academy where a lot of our apprenticeships and um, the training is completed there. So we're also a training provider. And um, so we don't, so for some of our programs within the operational world, we can do um, that training on site that meets the apprenticeship standard. So that's a huge investment, not only for our own people, but for our communities as well, because it's provision of best in class training that gives an assurance to our communities that we're being the very best that we can be. And also you can see they're helping those that need it most. We've got um, you know, different uh, registers for vulnerable customers that may need support in paying their bills. And, and that links also nicely into culture. So we'll come on to that quickly. So environment, I've spoke about that, and environment is our supply chain, so it's really important to us. So we're interacting with it every single day in what we do, and there are commitments that we have there with regards to, for example, how do we become a net carbon zero organisation by 2030? And different, um, different, not so much the targets that we have, but different initiatives to enable us to reach that goal. So huge emphasis on sustainability, the environment we know that these are subjects that are very close to everybody's hearts and um, whatever role or program that you go into you will be supporting that green agenda social so off the back of that slide about the um, regulator and the targets that we have there from, from a social perspective when you decide what in sort of organization you wish to pursue an opportunity with that then personally, and, and I think um, you know, the number of apprentices that stay with us after completing their program is testament to um, Seven Trend as a culture and organization, but we do provide a lot of support socially within our communities. So not only is there a purpose, there is a social purpose to what we do. So um, we, have, we have sort of set aside 
profits, uh, 1% of all profits going into community funds that support charities up and down, you know, north, west, east, south, across the whole of the Seven Trent region. Um, we do also mention the academy. There's also volunteering that every single employee has the opportunity to support within their communities as well and be community champions. And then we also, you know, celebrate that diversity um, and inclusion and quality. So from a gender sort of equality as well, we've recently been recognised again um, in one of the external sort of um, global surveys that there is, which is uh, which is of, of great sort of importance, and um, we celebrate that. Okay, so let's go into the sort of <clears throat> nuts and bolts, really, about um, the opportunities that we have. So, as a reminder, um, apprenticeships across different levels, from GCSE equivalent up to degree, at Seven Trends, um, apprenticeship programmes are a real job, a permanent contract, exactly the same benefits as all other employees as well. Um, there is, of course, a caveat there that we were sort of looking for everybody to be successful, but it is a permanent position before you would then go into a role that's already sitting there within the business when you join. It's just that you're on an apprenticeship contract. And what we're going to be talking about this evening is, is really the operational world, where we have a lot of opportunity within the uh, level three, A-level equivalent um, apprenticeships, there is also level two as well from an operational sort of technician's perspective. But then also we do have the sort of level fours and um, within sort of foundation degree level. The most important thing that I want everybody to sort of remember is that um, level three might be the start of your career journey, but there is plenty of examples of people that have completed level three in the operational technician world, for example, and then there's career development and um, to go on to degree courses as well on based on an individual case by case basis. But we have opportunities from level two all the way through to level seven. Let's move on. So operational world, where do we have opportunities? We understand that there's, you know, it does take time. Career management does take time. It's not something that you can do in five minutes. That's why you're on here this evening. But we, we sort of do have a variety of roles that would allow you to sort of go out in our communities and also out on the site as well. So our assistant water network technicians, they do work within our communities. So they do monitor and detect leaks. And that's what Megan will be talking about. The maintenance and operations technicians, they are out on site, be it clean water, wastewater. But you're getting that world class training either via the academy from an operations technician's perspective or through training providers that Seven Trend work with. So the maintenance technicians go to um, Make UK, which is based in Birmingham, and that's for pretty much for the first 12 months. So accommodation provided, meal allowance provided, simply a case of you getting there and sort of, uh, sort of being taken to and from accommodation, building relationships up with other apprentices. Then we have, as you can see, vehicle technicians, Waste network technicians as well, with the training being completed at our academy. Then we have site security as well. And also, I would say tanker driver does fall into the operational world. And that sort of fits in within Leah's part of the business in Viper. I'm not going to cover this too much, but I think for, because we've got Serena with us this evening, then we do have sort of project management that will be sort of highlighted. And Serena is a project engineer. So it does get to see sites, you know, from time to time. But I think to put it into context just very briefly, those are the commercial roles that we have. So just as a flavour of breadth of opportunity, then there is lots available for everybody. The Academy, as I mentioned, all of our people have access to this. So it's continually developing yourself through, um, I suppose planned interventions as part of the apprenticeship, but any employee has access to a whole suite of facilities and opportunities to develop as they go through their career journey at Seven Trump. So at this point, at 20 past five, I'm going to introduce Leah, uh, who's going to give you a little bit of detail about her own career journey. And I think probably re-emphasize re the sort of opportunity that we have as well. So. Leah, over to you. 
Thanks, Darren. And um, I'm delighted to be here tonight. Um, developing people is really, really important to me. And, um, and I think Darren has just um, highlighted the breadth and diversity of apprenticeships uh, that we have in Seven Trend. So my role is I'm head of bioresources. Um, Darren made it all sound very, um, I don't know, <laughs> secretive and complicated. But essentially what my department does is um, if you think of all the stuff that ends up going down the drain, the stuff that you flush, the stuff that you goes down the sink, um, stuff that comes off roads when it's rained heavy, that all goes into one of our waste treatment works. Um, and that is really a recycling center. So one of my colleagues um, does all the hard work of cleaning up um, the liquid and makes it um, what we call it final effluent, but it's like it just looks like drinking water and that goes back into the river. As you can imagine, there is lots of solid. Um, I don't need to explain any further what that solid might be, um, but that has huge value to us and we call it sludge. So I manage all the sludge process. So I have 26 sites. Um, I have a whole load of anaerobic digesters, which are just big, like big stomachs. Um, and they, they, the sludge just sits in there at a nice hot temperature and produces gas. And with that gas, we produce lots of renewable energy. We either turn it into renewable electricity or we turn it into renewable gas that we actually put back into the gas network. And then on the back of that whole process, I end up with something that we call cake, not the chocolate cake that you might want to have with afternoon tea, um, but it is like an organic fertilizer. So I have a whole team that then work with farmers and we sell that to farmers and we spread that on agricultural land. So I think it's I think it's the most interesting bit of Seven Trent. I'm sure everybody will say there, but it's the most interesting bit of Seven Trent. But um, but yeah, um, I love it. I love Seven Trent. Um, and I think we have some amazing opportunities in apprenticeships. Um, so within bioresources, we always take on a good number of apprenticeships every year. Um, we've been expanding the types of apprenticeships. So uh, Darren highlighted the tanker driver. Um, so we're looking to take some more tanker drivers on this year. This will be our third intake. So we've created that a few years ago and had a number of um, both male and females go through that um, that program and are now driving some of my tankers filled with beautiful sludge um, around. And I think for me, um, you know, apprenticeship is just like a starting point, as, as Darren said, and almost the world is your oyster. And I thought I'd just give you an example before I talk about me, just an example of um, one of my technicians um, currently working in bioresources. So this individual finished their apprenticeship. Um, they were an operator and almost within a few months, they'd already got a promotion into uh, what we call a senior technician role, doing absolutely brilliant. You know, they got that promotion ahead of people who've been in the organization for many, many years. Um, so the potential is there. And actually even more amazing, this individual then for different reasons, their manager had to move to a different area and they then stepped up and, and took over managing that team. Um, we've just put them through a future leader program um, because they've got huge potential. So, you know, don't almost there is no limit to where you can get to um, when, you know, starting through the apprenticeship. So I'll just give you a little bit more about me. Um, so, you know, I entered, I started actually working with British Gas. Um, many, many years ago, way before um, any of you were probably born. Um, so I do feel very old. Um, but, um, and I, I joined as a graduate. And partly that was because there wasn't the amazing apprenticeships that there are nowadays. Um, I'm sure I would have looked down the apprenticeship route. And, you know, just the the breadth of opportunities now um, is just amazing. So I joined British Gas and I um, worked there for about 20 years. Um, did loads of different roles in operations, commercial, procurement, climate change, marketing. Um, and then I joined ten, uh, Seven Trend about 10 years ago. And even in Seven Trend, I've done a number of different roles. Um, I've worked, I worked, started working on the wayside. Then I went and ran the Clean Water Network. I then became head of customer experience. And then I've moved back into waste, which, as I say, I think is the most interesting uh, bit of it. And I think for me, the advantage of organizations like Seven Trend and National Grid are very similar. Um, I'm not trying to sell National Grid over Seven Trend, but it's those sort of organizations, you can have a really varied career. So 
you know, I joined as a marketing graduate, but you know, the types of roles I've had uh, been able to do just working for an organization that not only is big enough to have that variety, but also is really supportive and encourages you to develop and try something new. And these amazing support structures around, you know, somebody having a go at something new. So I was asked to around, you know, what were my career highlights? And I've done like so many different things, so many different jobs um, that there is just loads of highlights. What I've pulled out, and there's a few little photos there, was just some of the things that, some of the extra things that working for an organization like Seven Trent um, can give you. Now, the first one, the electric car, actually was a National Grid one. It was just before I, I left National Grid. And I had the opportunity to test an, an electric car before they ever made the marketplace. So I, um, it was when I was doing the climate change role and I had an electric car for 12 months. I had to write a blog, you know, back in those days, they were, they were terrible at running out of charge. It was quite a scary time, but it was just an amazing opportunity before anybody could ever go and buy an electric car. Little old me had, was able to drive around in one. And then since I've joined Seven Trent, um, so a couple of things, highlights there. Number one, I got the opportunity to go to Harvard University for a week to do a leadership course. You know, again, that was beyond what I would ever have envisaged being able to do. Um, and yet Seven Trent opened up that opportunity. And then I think, yeah, personal highlight um, probably is being able to meet Prince Charles, if you haven't recognised the man I'm shaking hands with. Um, so I've got a really exciting innovation project. So there is lots of research and development going on um, in, operate, in the world of operations. And I've got a really exciting project, which is taking my fertiliser product and making it into like little pellets um, that is a lot more usable and actually a lot more environmentally friendly. And um, through this technology project, I was able to meet Prince Charles and spent half an hour chatting with him. And, you know, he was there with a handful of my um, mineral organic fertilizer, which we all know where it came from in the first place. So, um, so there, that's the future king. Um, so in terms of top tips, um, I guess I've just really got one. And I think the main thing for me and the thing that I found really important through my career, and I was really appreciative of people saying this to me in the early days is just keeping an open mind and being curious so it's easy sometimes that you think oh operations wastewater oh that doesn't sound like the place for me i want to do something far more glamorous or you might look at a job title and think oh that looks a bit boring or i'm not sure ask some questions because usually job titles or a department doesn't tell you the real story you know the world of operations, I, I love it. And, you know, it's fast paced. There's lots of problem solving. You're making a difference every day. You're working with some great people. And almost any job is what you make it yourself. So I would just urge you to, you know, just keep an open mind, ask those questions, find out a little bit more about what something might be or might not be. And before you make your judgment. So I think I'm now going to, am I, I don't know whether I'm passing back to Darren or... Yeah, we can go straight on. But thank you very much, Leah. We can go straight on to Serena. So, over to you. Hello. Uh, as Darren said, I'm Serena. I joined Seven Trent Water after my A levels as a level four project management apprentice. And um, whilst I was at school, I did my A levels and I didn't know whether I wanted to go to university or not, but I wasn't really sure because no one had really told me at school about what apprenticeships were out there uh, and what qualifications you could get out of them. They kind of only pushed university, but the thought of going to university after struggling so much with A-levels is, <laughs> I can see my slides moving, sorry, um, it was pretty daunting at the time and I wanted to see what else was out there. So I, I looked at the skills I had at the moment. I did some part-time jobs. I was in the army cadets and I did my Duke of Edinburgh and things like that. And the amount of outside experience I had other than just the qualifications I came in my A-levels with was really helped me decide what I wanted to do. So I think it's quite important alongside getting your school qualifications, get some other experience as well. Find what you like, find what you're good at. And then it opens more doors for you. So I could take that experience and use it in my 7 Trent interview. And it also gave me a lot of skills 
which I could actually demonstrate to to help me in the role I got in the end, which was, like I said, a project management apprenticeship. So I managed to get the apprenticeship and I was doing a level four diploma in project management. And it was done in one week blocks over about a year, a year and a half. Um, so really not that long doing my apprenticeship. And I came out with the level four at the end, as well as getting my professional qualifications. And I, the team I was in at the time whilst I was doing my apprenticeship was a PMO team, which means project management office, which gave me the first insights to how projects work, the reporting process and things like that. Shortly after, I moved into a mains renewal team, which is probably the work you're probably most familiar with when you think of Seven Trent, which is people putting pipes in the road, probably on your uh, on your streets or when you're going to school, you might see them on the main roads and things like that. That's what my team did at the time. And um, it was really interesting projects. I got to go out to site a lot. I learned a lot about the construction side of it and the water networks. And then I moved on to the team I'm in now after I finished my apprenticeship as a assistant project engineer in the DSR team, which are these big water tanks you can see in the photo just in the bottom right um, of the presentation there. And you have to get harnessed up and go down the ladder into the confined space. You have to be confined space trained with your breathing apparatus and your um, gas monitor and things like that. And it's um, really exciting work very different to just sitting in an office every day which is what I didn't want to do when I was thinking about the careers I wanted when I was back in my A-level so I'm um, looking back now I'm glad the route I've taken has meant that I'm not just sat in an office I've not just gone and done a degree I've done a lot more than that and I'm actively working and learning new things every single day um, it's not it's not all work that I do whilst I'm here there's a lot of extra opportunities like Darren mentioned before you have your community days there's competitions that you can get involved with I spoke to the education minister as well as the chair of Seven Trent and also Seven Trent is the official environmental sponsor for the Commonwealth Games so they opened up applications within Seven Trent for people who want to be volunteers at the Commonwealth Games and, and I was selected with a bunch of other Seven Trent employees so that was something I'm really excited to get involved with. So for the future for me um, I've, now I've finished my apprenticeship, I actually started a degree and that was funded by, funded through Seven Trent. I had support of my managers and that's what I'm doing at the moment. I go one day a week and I'm studying project management. So even though my apprenticeship was over and I got a level four qualification, that wasn't the end of my learning. And that wasn't the end of the support I got from Seven Trent either. So they still supported me in my role every day. My managers are really helpful and um, I'm doing a degree through them. Since I finished my apprenticeship, I became an assistant project engineer and have since been promoted to a project engineer. So the scope of moving up within your career within Seven Trent is, is really good. They really support, they really supported me through my applications and helping me get to the next stage. Saying I've only been at Seven Trent for just over three years now to have already progressed and started a degree and things like that is uh, it's, it's really good. Um I'm going to get some other professional qualifications. I'm working towards getting my professional um, body membership with the APM, which is the Association of Project Managers. And then that will help me get chartership as well. So there's a lot of um, extra things at Seven Trent, like I mentioned, the Commonwealth Games, but then also that you get a lot of support with your day to day work and your qualifications. It doesn't just stop at your apprenticeship. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, Serena. That's um, that's really, really good of you to take the time out and to share your experiences. It's really sort of very broad and also brilliant to sort of see you going from completing one apprenticeship programme, but also being given the opportunity to sort of complete that degree as, as well. So let's move on and introduce Megan. Hello, Megan. How are you? I think your camera was on. Hi everyone. So as Darren said earlier, I'm Megan. Um, I am one of the apprentice assistant water network technicians. Um, so what I do is predominantly based around leakage, but there's a load of other things that um, come in with that as well. 
we work with loads of other people within Seven Trent um, and we work really closely together to kind of help our community. But Darren's asked me to talk a little bit about my experiences when I was at school and I was in the same position as you guys choosing my GCSE options, etc. I can see on the poll that 90% of you have said that you want to go down the apprenticeship route, which is really exciting. And I would definitely, definitely advise that. Um, so when it came to me choosing my GCSE options, I kind of thought, about what I enjoyed and what I knew I was good at rather than thinking, right, I need to find a job that I want to do when I'm older. Because if I'm totally honest, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, so I thought, right, what am I good at and what do I enjoy doing? And I knew that I enjoyed being involved with people. I liked working with people, I liked working in a team. And I loved maths. That was like my favourite subject. And it was something I wanted to do even further, something that I wanted to get loads of stuff out of and take with me and apply to a new job um so I think in the end I chose geography history drama just because drama was a great subject for me it was a chance for me to just kind of express myself and have fun which I absolutely loved and I think the third one I chose was textiles it was quite a while ago that I did those so I can't remember exactly um so I did my GCSEs I did quite well um still wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do but I knew I wanted to be in that kind of health and social care sector so I went to college for six months um, studied health and social care it was really interesting I, I really enjoyed it but I knew I didn't want to be in a classroom environment anymore unfortunately at the time I didn't really know a lot about apprenticeships I didn't really know how they worked um, I haven't really been told about how to get into them or how to find an apprenticeship, but I was fortunate enough to have a family friend who worked in the childcare sector. She owned a preschool and she offered me an, an apprenticeship at the preschool, which was amazing for me at the time because it meant I could carry on doing what I enjoyed. I could work in a more practical environment, which is what I wanted to do. And I also was earning money at the same time, which at 16 was amazing. <laughs> So I went into that, completed my apprenticeship there, moved on to a different preschool, worked there for a year. And then as COVID hit, I kind of thought, you know what, I've done this for three years now. I love it, but I want to try something different. I want a new kind of path to go off in. I've got this that I can come back to if I want to, but I want to try something new. Um, and I was fortunate enough to actually have a family member that works for Seven Trent. And he said to me, just have a look at their apprenticeship schemes. He really said how he knew people that had gone onto the apprenticeships the year before and they'd been really successful. They really enjoyed it. He was like, just go and have a look and see what you think. So I had a look online, did a bit of research and found out that they were doing some open days at STC, similar to kind of what's going to be happening on Friday at the academy. Um, went along to one of those, spoke to loads of different people from all over the business, from the waste side, from um, my kind of side of things, the operational side. And operations just stood out to me because it was more of a practical job. I'd be out in the field, I'd be on my feet, I'd be working with people, which is what I wanted to do. And leakage actually caught my eye, which is something I if you'd have asked me five years ago if I wanted to work in leakage, I would have definitely said no. I would never have even thought of it. Um, but it really stood out to me. And I thought, you know what, that's actually quite interesting because there's so many different factors that come with it um, rather than just a, a bit of water running down the side of the road. There's so much more to it than that. So I went and applied for the apprenticeship. Um, was fortunate enough to actually be accepted, which I was really, really happy about. So excited to start. Um, I've yeah been here six months now, but when I started, there was kind of like a, a week where all of the apprentices, not just the operations, all of them went to the academy for a week. Um, just kind of like a, it was like a joining event kind of thing. Um, it was a chance for us to all get to know each other um, and just to get to know more about the business and how the business worked. And I've m made really, really good friends since then. Um, we've stayed in touch. We've gone out and done things like all of us together, which is really, really nice because I didn't actually think that I'd 
come into this apprenticeship and make friends out of it as well that was something that didn't really cross my mind um but six months down the line we're still in touch and that's really really nice but I think for me one of the other things that stood out is as Darren said earlier this side of the business is a predominantly male side of the business um I know in my county there's only two of us so myself and another lady who work in operations and that's something I'd quite like to change I'm quite passionate about you know if men can do it then women can do it as well um but I think that's something that everyone at Seven Trent's passionate about I mean all the the men that I work with they're very much encouraging women to come into the operational side as well um and I think it's something that everyone's quite excited about to see that grow which I'm sure it will do but everyone has just been so welcoming and also so patient as well. Um, you know, going into something new that I had no knowledge about at all was really quite nerve wracking. Um, but everyone has been so kind, so patient. You know, there's literally no stupid questions. And it, that's something that you hear people say every day in Southern Trent. There's no stupid questions, you know. If you've got something on your mind or you're not sure about something, just ask because people will always be happy to help you. And that's something that I've learned in the last six months. Um, the academy has been brilliant. My training provides, obviously, Seven Trent's the training provider. But Chris Bound, he's our trainer and assessor. He's worked for Seven Trent for a very long time. He's in previous uh, various different jobs within Seven Trent. And he's just been amazing as well really fun he's got a really good balance between the practical learning and the theory learning so we do spend some time in the classroom but we spend a lot of time out on the rig out on site learning which is brilliant as well because it just keeps you really involved and it keeps you on your toes which is what we want um but as well the managers they've been brilliant um at getting everyone in and getting everyone involved same as darren and going back to what darren said earlier showing care and pride and courage and things like that over the last six months that's been so evident for, from everyone you know the people I work with they do they take such pride in the job that they do they're so passionate about it and some of them absolutely love it I've met people that have worked here for 30 40 odd years and they wouldn't change it for the world they they're really passionate about their job which is really exciting to see because it kind of makes me think I want to be like that in 20, 30 years time. You know, I want to be excited to come to work and really passionate about it. Um, and again, they're all just showing care in terms of how patient they've been, how welcoming they've been. And I think I've shown quite a lot of courage as well, really, coming into this side of the business as a woman. Um, very, Like I said, very nerve wracking, but I think I've shown a lot of courage in doing that and and how I've progressed from in the six months that I've been here that's something that I'm I'm really quite proud of but I'm I'm really happy to see that 90% of you have said you want to go down the apprenticeship route because I can't recommend it enough especially at 16 17 years of age you're going to be learning such amazing skills that you can carry with you for the rest of your life but also earning a wage at the same time all the benefits that come with seven trent as a company that you know you, you don't want to miss out on them i know i definitely didn't um but with that being said if you do decide to go down the seven trent path i wish you all the best of luck but also if you choose to take an apprenticeship with a different business as well um or wherever you go i wish you all the best of luck with that as well um and i can see there's a few questions which i think might be aimed at me but I'll wait until um, six o'clock when we do the Q&A and then I'll go through them with you then, if that's OK with you, Darren. That's absolutely fine, Megan. Thank you very much indeed for sharing that um, on, honest kind of overview. Um, we've, gone through both, we've gone through both of your slides. Is there something else Just there about the, the training facilities at the academy? I mean, you've sort of really benefited from that. So you and your cohorts, then, is, is that helped kind of develop that um, sort of collegiate kind of? Is your microphone on, Darren? Sorry, I can see I can see you talking, yeah. but I can't hear anything. Yeah, it is. Can you not hear me? I can hear him. Um, 
so if Megan can't hear you, then perhaps maybe Megan sounds gone a bit funny. You might need to log in and log out if it doesn't start working. You can hear me though, Sharon, right? Yeah, I can hear both of you. Okay. You can't hear me, Megan. No. I don't think she can hear me either. Okay, fine. Um, can we get a message, Sharon, to Megan to dial back in? I think she might be doing that now. She might have worked that one out herself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Do you want to carry on and we'll Absolutely. see you? Absolutely. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, fine. So I think what we'll do now is just set up a one final poll. And, and what I'd like everybody to just give an indication, I think there's some great examples of how, you know, from Leah's perspective, um, a senior leader within the business, the commitment to apprenticeships and as a female working in the operational world, um, what, what opportunity there is, um, through to Serena highlighting um, and also the tips that um, Leah mentioned about sort of, you know, keep an open mind, you know, and if you're not sure, ask that question. And um, if you enjoy problem solving, then I think that uh, you've got that analytical mind, you've got that interest and desire to learn, then that there is, you know, that there is just so much opportunity there. And um, moving on to Serena level four project management going on to do a degree i'd also add that um, other, other level three apprenticeships do provide that route as well within the maintenance and operational worlds and maintainers and operators i've included some links in the chat as well to the website and these are a couple of questions about location and then finally from megan's perspective it was lovely to hear her acknowledge some of the things that I was highlighting in the earlier slides about the culture that we have, the supportive nature and investment that we make into our apprenticeships and, and apprentices and, and how that can help in development. And that's hugely important as well. So what we're going to do now is just cover off um, until six. Um, let's talk about some key dates. So applications are open at the moment. They're, they open on the 10th of January. All of our apprenticeship um, programs will be open for applications <laughs> until the 13th of March. After that day, what we'll be doing is people that could be flying on that very last day, we will give some time to complete some online assessments, which I'll come on to in, in a moment. Um, but there will be virtual assessment centres taking place in April. If people are struggling technology wise and we can provide that support as we sort of um, as we look at carbon emissions and reducing those, then the inclusion of virtual assessments in 2021, which is forced upon us based on the pandemic, worked really well. So we but you know we've asked uh, those people that have joined us for their feedback and feedback from all of those candidates that sort of joined us and it was very positive. So we're going to go with that again this year. But if people are struggling, then we can provide the support to maybe get to an office and use technology in those offices instead. We'll do offers, make offers at the beginning of May after those assessments are taken place and complete some onboarding activities. And then we'll have pre-joiners activities in July, followed by start dates for our 2022 cohort being at the very beginning of August. So that's really important. So we're bringing it forward a couple of weeks. So we can get people settled in, go on inductions before then college will start for some programs pretty much the beginning of September. So it gives people time to settle in, meet their teams before going off to complete studies in certain uh, programs. So what is the selection process? We, we have four different stages. Depending on the program that you apply for, there would be three. So for a lot of our operational apprenticeships, then um, we do ask all candidates to complete an application form. And then we ask um, and, and provide candidates with an opportunity to learn more about us as an organization. So 
we ask candidates to complete three different exercises online. That probably sounds a bit more daunting than what it is, because what it will do is it'll introduce you to the world of bioresources, so you can learn more about Liz side of the business and, and cake and sludge and leakage, so you'll sort of get to learn more about um, where Megan works. And also there's an activity that introduces the world of green power and food waste and creating um, creating energy through the different anaerobic digestive plants um, in that part of the business. It's not a technical activity, but it will give you an insight into what those areas do. And what we ask you to do is to complete some questions naturally, respond naturally, and what you would do, so you'll get some preferences, lots of video, lots of guidance, so that you don't start before you're completely comfortable. Now in the comms that we'll send to you, so once you've submitted your application form, everyone will be given that opportunity to complete the online assessment. We don't, at that point, sift out that application. So we ask you to complete the online assessment, and pending the programme that it is that you've applied for. So, for example, in Megan's world, there wouldn't be a numerical reasoning test, which is the cognitive test at stage two. But for the maintainers, where you could be specialising um, in electrical or mechanical or instrument or instrumentation control and automation, there is an element of um, analysis and, and numerical ability that we would like to assess. So we'd ask you to complete that and then that would be you know, some thresholds in place for both activities. So if you're applying for the operations technician, the vehicle technician, the tanker driver, the assistant water network technician, you would complete your assessment at the online assessment stage. You wouldn't do those numerical cognitive tests. If it's the main if it's the maintenance technicians in the operational world out on the site, then you would. So we do sort of um, ask people to complete that. And, and people have already, and we've got you know, people applying. But again, there's preparation that you can complete. So in the communications that we send to you, we've set up a preparation hub that gives you access to different online assessments. Now, these aren't um, of the same level of difficulty as you could imagine, but the main point is, is that you, if you've not completed these before, then by looking at that preparation hub, you can get a feel for the kind of assessments that you'll be completing. And that's really important. So the assessment's there to, and to make sure you understand what it is that you're going to be doing, not necessarily the level of difficulty of the question. That is included in the instructions, but do bear that in mind. So at the end, in mid-March, what we'll be doing is going through all of our candidates that have completed those assessments, and we will have to go through a fair selection process. So we will be looking at the performances on those assessments to then be able to help make a decision on who it is that we would like to invite to that final stage. Now, the SBI is included on this slide. is a strength-based interview and presentation. But before you get too worried about presentation, it is just a one-to-one -one piece of prepared work that you would complete and bring along with you on the day. Secondly, the strengths-based interview will feel more like a conversation. So there'll be some there'll be candidate packs that will give you a little bit more detail about what that is, but they're all really easy to sort of Google up strengths-based interview so you can get a feel for the style of interview that you would be completing. Now the online application form. It is used in that SIFT, and we ask for personal data about you at the start, but the key questions are really why seven trends? And also there's an additional question there about, tell us why you're, you know, why you're pursuing your program of choice. So with activities like tonight, or if you're watching this and following the, from the recording, then, then you can sort of indicate where you've done that research, how you've kind of been able to narrow down that choice to be able to then um, press submit and pursue that particular opportunity. Online assessments are indicated and also final stage interview and presentation as well. So they're one-to-ones, it's an interview with one person. Um, the presentation is with a different person. But there will be candidate care sessions that will be running in the in the run-up to those assessment days. 
And that is because we do feel as though, or we do know that there'll be some of you that haven't had a formal interview before. So by just working with us as a new talent team, that we can, any fears that there may be, we can hopefully make sure that you are confident on the day and you should be right because you've met the threshold so you've everything that we've put in front of you online assessment wise you've, you've you've done great so there is a pat on the back that we do want to give to you before you come along on the day so we can give you detail about the structure and it will be very helpful um, and supportive and, and, and guidance that way so what we offer um Induction, I've mentioned, so that will help you build relationships with apprentices, enable you to meet other teams as well, and representatives from the organisation that will be participating activities. And um, that will be, I think, the second week of August. So we do want to make sure as many of you that are joining us are, are able to spend that week residential with us. Your mentor, so it doesn't have, that won't be somebody that is in your team, that'll be somebody outside of your team that can sort of support you, develop as you go through your apprenticeship journey. We provide development plans and bespoke training in addition to the professional learning that you're completing on your apprenticeship programme. So there's lots there available to you. I'm conscious of time. <clears throat> It's your opportunity to ask questions. So I can see from that poll, the last one, um, I think it, I'm not sure if Sharon is, is able, if we're able to just capture and tell us afterwards the number of people that have completed that poll, because I can't see the numbers, but it's quite sort of evident that the information that we've provided this evening has changed people's views on the friendships at seven trend and that's one of the reasons why we, we sort of work with the likes of sharon and your team at career map because we want to change the perception it is an exciting industry if you're somebody that is a, has an interest in stem you might be practical learner rather than so you're considering your friendship route there's a whole host of opportunities available there for you so 80 percent of people have said it's changed your view 10 percent have said no your opinion not but another 10 percent say it remains the same so maybe there's 10 percent of the people on here that we've still got to do a little bit of work on maybe that's what that's telling me um let's go to the chat with any questions then sharon i know that you've been monitoring these during the session i can't hear you are you on mute here I am telling everybody off about their mute buttons and things, and I just uh, <laughs> so, uh, I was just going to say we have an awful lot of questions and not an awful lot of time. Okay, fine. Um, so I'm going to kind of short word answers, and I'll try to pull them together. But what we'll also do is if one of you could drop into the ch chat yeah. uh, for everybody who's joining us. So if we don't get to any of your questions, if you have a contact email address or a website where they can go to for further information and uh, that way I'm just going to give everybody the heads up that thank you so much for putting your questions in the chat and uh, and I'm apologies for not being able to get to everyone yeah uh, but we'll start with um <clears throat> some of these have already been asked or uh, answered already for instance uh, Yasmin asked if there's opportunities to progress after finishing uh, an apprenticeship which was already um made really really clear and exciting in lots of different ways um one of the questions is what what locations are your apprenticeships available at yeah that's a great question and just just for clarity because some questions coming through i think it's from leah i'm not sure if there's any technical difficulties um I, i'm hoping that everybody else on the part that i was just going through there at the end was able to hear me because i think there might be a few technical difficulties sharon so if you could look into that for us then that'd be great in terms of locations then we do have opportunities across every single county. So I've indicated in the chat, from an assistant network technician perspective, um, there are opportunities in every single county in the Midlands. From a maintenance technician perspective, and that's the reason why I included the link, if you go on to the role, then there will be details of the locations included in there. But if you're looking at it from a, a maintenance technician or operations technician, we have opportunities in every single county in the geographical region. When we go to the likes of tanker drivers, it's a little bit more specific based on the volume of roles that we have. So within Lear's world, we have roles in Gloucestershire and we have roles in Derbyshire. 
With regards to vehicle technicians, we have roles in Derbyshire, we have roles in Shropshire. But what the links do provide that I've shared, if you go on to the specific programmes, people can start to look that way. But look at what you're interested in first. Career planning does take a little bit of time. Don't just look at it by locations. Think about where your interests are. So we have had apprentices move locations because of that's the kind of programme that they want to pursue. Great. Um, and this is a nice one. Uh, Flynn, if you're there still, I do apologise. I seem to have cut off the end of your question, but I do think I get the gist of the, the general one. Flynn uh, Donahue was talking about his son. He was 16 and taking his GCSEs yeah. uh, in the spring. And yeah. I'm sure he was asking, you know, basically how young and, and what... Yeah, completely get are. it. There's a lot of, there was conversations that we had six apprentices last year that joined... Um, having just completed their uh, GCSEs. So 16 year, different programs. So there was a little bit of pastoral care that we provided more to, to the parents, I think, you know, and providing reassurance that they'll be looked after. Um, you know, because travel, for example, to college in Birmingham, you know, there's, there's, there, there will be, you know, apprentices that will be traveling in similar locations to the college. So building up relationships quickly, it'll be absolutely fine. Our college um, and accommodation providers, from a safeguarding perspective, there's all the kind of policies and rules in place there, as you would expect. Academy-wise, you know, and our apprentices are well looked after as well. So we know you can't drive, you know, at the age of 16, having just completed A-levels, and some of our locations are quite rural. We get that. So have a think about those early years on how it is that you would get from A to B. But... Don't let it stop you pursuing the apprenticeship program that you really wish to, to join. That's great. And um, I, we, are, we are out of time, but I do want to ask one last question. That yeah. We've got, um, we often have quite a lot of uh, parents um, and careers leaders on here and um, teachers. Uh, do you do much in the way of things like uh, internships or um, sorry, work experience. Work experience. It's, it's a really, what we'll be doing at Easter during Easter vacation period. So I think it's the fourth and fifth. I think the vac vacation sort of time starts at the very beginning of Easter, uh, beginning beginning of April. Sorry. So that first week of Easter vacation period, we're holding two day discovery events at our academy. Those will be oh, included fun. online. So um, the email address for any schools that are on board is write to my colleague Charmaine at potential at sevenTrends.co.uk. So that's potential at sevenTrends.co.uk. We are supporting schools as much as we can from a Gatsby benchmark 0.5 and 6 with supporting schools by coming in and provision of a experience in the workplace. Great. Well, Thank you very, very much. It was really fun and informative. And I think one thing that's really lovely with having organizations like Seven Trent on here is a lot of myth busting goes yeah. on because I think young people don't really know um, all the opportunities and the exciting routes you can take. So thank you, everybody. Um, at this time of day, you start the presentation in this light and now it's dark out. So it's very good of you <laughs> to uh, spend your early evening with us. Thank you very much for the team at Seven Trent for being with us. Uh, really Thank great you. session. This session cool. and all of our sessions for National Apprenticeship Week are being recorded and you can watch again on nationalapprenticeshipweek.co.uk. They'll probably, we've got a lot of them this week, so they probably won't get up until next, next week. Um, but there's lots of links you got to quickly click on now that are in the chat box um, so that you can get in touch if you want to get in touch sooner. Um, right, so that's it. Farewell from me. Farewell from the team at uh, Seven Trent uh, and have a good evening, everybody. All the best, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.